Say you're living in a smart house and it's gathering all sorts of information. Some of that information is actually useful. For example, I have several of these photon particle Arduino boards scattered about gathering temperature, humidity, and dust data. Those dust sensors, by the way, are very useful if you're in the kitchen. I can remind you to turn the fan on if things get a little smoky. The question for the day is how do you get the information from there into here? So speech is a very easy way to do it. You talk to the house, it talks back. For example, ask house where is Helen? Helen is at the hospital. Does she works there? Don't worry, she's not in the emergency room. But say you have some music playing, and then speech becomes a little bit more problematic because you can't hear it. So the house just told us something, but I couldn't hear what it said because the Beatles had a higher priority. Uh, Alexa, turn off Sonos. So what are the other options? You can display speech. Um, back when I lived in Minnesota, I had a two foot big LED outdoor display sign. So, 621,840. So I code up on this LED beta bright display, which is uh, large enough to be seen. Uh... So that scrolling LED display was of limited usefulness because only so much text and you had to wait for it to scroll to read it. At the other extreme for display information is you have um, computer displays, tablets, phones, TVs billions of pixels at your command. <clears throat> so uh, I spent the last month or so playing around with HTML and CSS and JavaScript, push bullets, and came up with a web page uh, that displays all kinds of what I think is funny, useful stuff. And that's what I'm going to show you today. So we're going to break this page down into uh, parts. The plot data here is plotted with the rickshaw plot library from the Xively cloud data that we pushed from our power and, and temperature and uh, sensors. So for example here we have the temperature upstairs, downstairs, and outside. <clears throat> and the red here is the power gathered from that Nurio sensor I blogged about a couple months ago. Here you can see the upstairs furnace kick on and the upstairs temperature go up accordingly. Uh, here you can see the water heater come on a couple times um, in the last. This uh, would be displaying 12 hours with the data. So we have temperature axis on the right and power axis on the left. At the top we have uh, displayed the text that's been spoken recently and it's updated uh, dynamically. Uh, so for example, Alexa, ask house what is the outside temperature? Done. So you see it updated right away. And this is the sensor I was pushing in the other room. And now you can see what it was trying to tell us. Up here we have a clock. Why not? Got a display. Might as well put a clock on it. Uh, this is when the data, uh, the plot data was last updated so we can make sure we're current. Uh, here we have the uh, data from the temperature sensors. This is the Nest thermostat upstairs and downstairs. 66 and 60 are the set points. 68 and 62 are what they're currently reading. The O means they're currently off. And then these are the uh, temperature and humidities from my Arduino sensors. Then we have the weather forecast here. This is uh, updated from the Yahoo weather f forecast uh, using um, simple weather J script Java script another mouthful. Um, <clears throat> so that's one part of this display. The other part, which is almost just as fun, is using it as a uh, photo slide screen. And what I have here is I can use the uh, keyboard keys to control the photos. I can go forward and backwards and I can um, minimize the photos. And they went uh, I can minimize them to the corner there and get them out of the way, or I can put them in the default state, which is where it uses a CSS animation to kind of grow the photo 
so it can, shares the screen with the other information. So part of the time we can look at the photo, part of the time we can look at the temperature and speech and uh, weather data. Uh, and that cycles on a 30 second loop, so it goes from one photo to the next throughout the day. And if we find something interesting, we can um, use the keys here and just go through it. What I did is I collected um, my photos, my dad's photos, my kids' photos. I collected about 100,000 photos. So we have no uh, limit to the... Uh, it's going to be a while before we get tired of these photos. What we do is we randomly load 100 of them at a time. That's why I can scroll through them so quickly. Is they're, they're all preloaded. And um, then the page periodically refreshes itself um, so we get a new set of 100 photos loaded. Um, and this display can uh, scale appropriately. There we have it on the TV down there. Um, we can display it on small screens, either horizontally or vertically. And what's most fun is I have now have an excuse to turn on some of these older, smaller monitors. Uh, they're actually, uh, you can buy um, you know, 24 inch monitor for uh, LED edge lit for, I don't know, 100 bucks. And as long as you get the LED edge lit rather than the fluorescent, they run at about 8 watts power. So you can leave these guys on throughout the day without busting your power budget. And then I have them automatically turn off at night and then turn on again in the next morning. This one is connected up to um, my uh, Smart House Linux box, which wasn't displaying anything else, so I put it to use. The one in here is a little more interesting because this is a standalone display that I hooked up to one of these new uh, Chrome bits. This is a um, $85 uh, computer that basically runs the Chrome OS. And in this case, I have it going through a VGA display adapter. You could hook it directly into a, v a DVI port if you had one. If you want audio, you need to go through these VGA. It's inexpensive, I don't know, $10 uh, adapter. And hook it up to one of your old displays. And it displays the same data. A uh, different set of pictures because it randomly loaded a different set. But you can see um, that... Um, animation, it's interesting that animation does take some CPU power. The Chrome bit doesn't have problems keeping up with it. But it does, yeah, I hooked up a power meter to that Chrome bit. And I can see the animation causes uh, it to think a little more because it's got to scale those photos. It costs, without the animation, about 4 watts of power and with it about 6 watts of power. So you can... Make your poison if you want to turn those on or just display the photos without it. HTML JavaScript to um, GitHub and that links below. And if you want to play with it and have questions, feel free to shoot me an email. Until then, I think that's it for today. This month, see you next month.